About 66 million years ago, the 15-kilometer-wide Chicxulub asteroid wiped out 75% of all living things on Earth in a very short time. The impact off the Yucatan Peninsula left a 180-kilometer-wide trench, and today, researchers know that this destructive asteroid probably did not come to Earth alone. In the newly discovered Nadir crater off the coast of Africa, traces appeared that point to an even more massive event than researchers previously thought. What exactly did scientists discover there, and how is the impact from Africa related to the great dinosaur extinction? Follow us on a journey into Earth's past and how likely it is that such an event will happen again in the near future. Within minutes, it was all over. On the day the Chicxulub asteroid hit the Earth, the living creatures that populated the Earth at that time probably saw a bright light for only a few moments. Then there was a tremendous shaking. Within seconds and minutes, life as it had been until that moment was no longer the same. The impact force of the chunk destroyed all life in the immediate vicinity within a few moments. The shockwave continued for hundreds of kilometers, bursting the Earth's crust, igniting fire breasts, and causing the release of toxic gases. The impact hurled tons of rock material into the air. The ocean floor was thrown into turmoil. And in addition to the already indescribable inferno, a massive tidal wave broke loose. The impact probably led to a global mass extinction because it had come in consequence to serious changes in the whole Earth climate. Due to darkening of the atmosphere and severe cold, first the plants died, and after them, the creatures which lived on those plants and finally also the carnivores. It's probable that there have been five such mass extinctions in the entire history of the Earth so far. At the end of the Ordovician era, about 443 million years ago, 85% of marine species disappeared. Again, researchers assume the consequences of climate change and possible impacts of comets or asteroids. The same scenario repeated itself in the late Devonian, and again, 75% of species died. Two other mass extinctions occurred 252 million years ago, at the end of the Permian, and 201 million years ago, during the Triassic-Jurassic transition. About 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrates disappeared due to massive volcanic activity and a resulting climate change. Last in this series came the Chicxulub asteroid, and presumably this impactor was not alone, as scientists have found a new crater that is also 66 million years old, and therefore very likely related to the devastating Mexico impact. The Nadir Crater Off the Coast of Africa The Chicxulub Crater first caught the eye on aerial photographs of the Yucatan Peninsula. That was in the 1970s, and in the 1980s, researchers were able to examine the crater in detail. At that time, it was quickly determined that only a huge impact could have formed this crater. Since the age of 66 million years coincided with the mass extinction of land dinosaurs, geologists and paleontologists were able to quickly put one and one together. Until now, researchers thought the inferno had only come from an asteroid, but then researchers from the University of Edinburgh discovered another crater off the coast of Africa. Originally, the geologists were looking at data on so-called seafloor spreading, a process that created the Atlantic Ocean by causing the African and American continents to drift apart. When the data were analyzed, typical shallow sedimentary successions were expected on the plateau. But instead, the scientists found something completely unexpected. An 8.5 kilometer wide depression beneath the seafloor had some unusual features. The nearly circular depression had a raised rim as well as a very prominent bump in the center. It also had structures indicative of chaotic sedimentary deposits that extended for dozens of kilometers outside the crater. Craters are normally formed on Earth by the collapse of a volcano, by processes of salt mining, or by impacts from celestial bodies such as asteroids and meteorites. The characteristics of Nadir argued against a volcano and also against salt mining. Instead, its characteristics resembled an impact crater. The Nadir crater is located about 350 kilometers off the coast of the African countries of Guinea and Guinea-Bissau and is only about 9 kilometers in diameter. 
The current water depth at this location is about 900 meters. So far, the crater has not attracted further attention because it's covered by 300 to 400 meters of marine sediment. The impact basin is smaller than the Chicxulub crater. Nevertheless, this impact must have had devastating consequences too. With an age of 66 million years, this event falls exactly into the Chicxulub impact epoch. Thanks to computer simulations, detailed insights became possible and scientists were able to draw conclusions about how the crater was formed. The object that struck the Earth here must have been about 400 meters wide. The asteroid struck in 500 to 800 meters of water depth. This caused regional devastation. A magnitude 6.5 earthquake was triggered and a tsunami up to 900 meters high began its deadly journey through the Atlantic Ocean. The effects of the flood were most likely felt throughout the Americas, Northern Europe, and as far away as Antarctica. Although the energy released by Nadir's impact was smaller compared to the Chicxulub impact, it was thousands of times greater than the tsunami caused by the undersea eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano on January 15, 2022. Researchers now believe there is a connection between impacts in Africa and Mexico. Indeed, large asteroids like Chicxulub are often accompanied by smaller moons. It's quite possible that the Nadir impactor was such a moon of the Chicxulub asteroid. The second possibility states that the giant parent asteroid may have broken into two or more pieces due to a collision with another larger celestial body. Such events were most likely rare, yet they did occur. In Sweden, researchers discovered traces of such a double impact. About 470 million years ago, fragments of an asteroid struck, leaving the Lochne and Malingan craters. Bolotosh in Ukraine, the third in the bunch. Another impressive crater that falls roughly in the era of mass extinction of dinosaurs is Bolotosh in Ukraine, northwest of Kiev. The 24 kilometer wide funnel was discovered in 1996. The event was dated at that time to about 65.4 million years ago. However, it is also quite conceivable that the Bolotosh asteroid thundered to Earth at about the same time as the Chicxulub and Nadir asteroids. The impacts could have been relics of a whole series of bombardments, when unrest in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter caused several asteroids in the main belt to collide and the fragments of the chunks were subsequently hurled towards Earth. Asteroids thundering towards Earth are usually completely destroyed by the impact, which is why it is impossible today to find rock fragments of the chunks and to draw conclusions from them as to where the asteroids came from and whether they were fragments of a much larger asteroid. After the Bolotesh impact, there were certainly also tsunamic waves in the Baltic and North Seas, as well as fires and global climate changes, which dramatically changed the environment and the development of life at that time. When will the next big asteroid come? In view of such data and images, who does not wonder whether events of this violence and size can happen again? On average, risky asteroids or comets nearly 50 meters in diameter collide with Earth about every 900 years. The impactors larger than one kilometer, which pose a potential risk of global catastrophe, strike on average every 100 million years. The last major impact occurred just over 100 years ago, when a massive airborne explosion occurred in Tunguska, Siberia in 1908. Since the area is very remote, there were few eyewitness accounts. However, based on the traces of destruction, it's believed to have been asteroids. Thousands of square kilometers of forest had been destroyed. The last devastating impacts were those of Yucatan, off the coast of Africa and in Ukraine. There may have been other events that we don't know about yet, Currently, only 15 to 20 extreme impact events are confirmed worldwide. Since most of the Earth is covered by water, we cannot rule out the possibility that many more large asteroids have crashed into oceans and caused huge tidal waves. Today, all near-Earth flying objects and main belt asteroids are constantly monitored by NASA and other organizations, and the good news is that most known near-Earth asteroids do not currently pose an immediate threat. Asteroids that come close to Earth are basically classified as potentially hazardous asteroids if they meet certain criteria. 
These criteria include a minimum size and an orbit that brings them within relatively close range of Earth. An example of such an asteroid is Apophis, which will fly close to Earth several times in the next few decades. Current calculations give no cause for alarm, as an impact is ruled out for the next 100 years. The same applies to the asteroid Bennu, which also regularly passes the Earth at a short distance, but will not impact for the time being. The technology for detecting and monitoring potentially dangerous celestial bodies is constantly advancing. Our chances of being able to respond early to potential threats are good, and science is currently working hard to study asteroids and comets. In the event of an emergency, we should be able to force a dangerous object out of its collision path and thus protect ourselves effectively. Overall, the situation in our solar system has calmed down enormously since the impacts of 66 million years ago. In the early days of the solar system, Earth was hit even more frequently by asteroids and comets, or even small planetoids. Today, most chunks romp safely, bound between Mars and Jupiter, as well as at the edge of the solar system in the Kuiper Belt. Experts assume that we owe it predominantly to the gravity of the gas giant Jupiter, that most asteroids do not rage more than wild projectiles by the system. That we are never completely protected from surprises, however, is shown by some impacts of smaller asteroids in the last years. A smaller rock exploded over Greenland and fortunately caused little damage. The asteroid that exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia in 2013 wreaked considerable havoc in the city, although it shattered into thousands of fragments while still in the air. Small asteroids and comets are less conspicuous on scientists' observation screens, but we will make progress in this area as well in the future. What do you think now? Are we really safe on Earth? Or do we have to expect nasty surprises from space in the future?